you take one individual and that person chooses to renew their mind, then they, no one can stop it. Don't let anyone ever tell you. The only person that can stop you from doing anything is you. You do it right, you get the results. Praise God as you see that open your Bible, it's Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Praise God. Well, this is our increase weekend. But we understand increase is the way of the kingdom of God. We're talking about it this weekend. But we are literally called to live a life of increase. God has designed you for increase. That is the truth. Psalm 115, verse 14. May the Lord give you what? Everybody shout out increase. increase. It is God's intention to increase you, but not just to increase you, to increase you more and how much? More. Say this, my God, my God is increasing me increasing. More, and more. more and more. Every time I increase, I'm ready for the next increase. Genesis chapter 1. This is, this is God's intention. Verse 26. God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Now that is an outstanding statement. Think about this. God literally created a duplicate of himself. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Amen. Let me write that down. No, did you get what I just said? God created a duplicate of himself. Read it. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God created man in his own image. Say that. I have been created in the image of God. Verse 28, then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I have given you herb, that heals seed, everybody say seed, seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Now, if you have a page Bible, you're writing notes in your Bible, just there underline food and write there provision. Everybody say provision. provision. Everything begins as a seed. In the kingdom of God. Say that everything in the kingdom of God begins as a seed. So we have here a promise from God, a covenant of increase. Look at Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. Not religion. I'm going to make you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. Now listen to this. And you shall be a blessing. The reason we are here is to reach our neighbors with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I get a bigger amen? amen? So he has been blessed so that God can be a blessing in other people's lives. And he says, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In other words, you can either get involved with this and then it will work for you as well. Or you can speak against it, turn against it, try and stop it. And God says, if you do that, I will stop them. 
if you want this, you need to get involved with it and allow God to do what he wants to do in your life. Now, this same Abraham, verse 9, Abraham journeyed going on still toward the south, and there was a famine. Everybody say famine. And Abraham went down to Egypt to dwell there, and the famine was severe in the land. Now, you know what happened if you've studied the word. At that point, uh, they went into Egypt, and his wife was beautiful. And he thought, you know, he'd have trouble if they thought his wife, they told her, tell her, you're my sister. And uh, Pharaoh started eyeing her. And because he liked her, he kept giving Abram stuff. He was blessing the man. And eventually, God got a hold of him. He said, hang on, oh, that's another man's woman. And when Pharaoh found that, he said, what are you doing? I could have made a mistake here. Slept with another man's wife. Thank God he hadn't gone ahead with it. So Abraham said, well, I thought we'd be in trouble. He said, well, just go now. But watch everything that he amassed while he was there. He, God made it so that he could get that. And then it says in verse 1 of chapter 13, Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him to the south. Verse 2, Abraham was what? Very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Family of God, understand this, that God's intention is for you to be provided for richly. Everybody say richly provided for. It's written into the word so that you would know. The enemy has tried to talk the church out of this, even though the church needs what it needs. Even those that don't want to talk about it still talk about it. In a way. But family of God, here's the truth. God wants you to be aware that when you're involved with him, you're going to be rich. Do I need to say, say amen every time? Look at ver chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Remember, the Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children. Abram was aware that he should have a child. He knew his wealth wasn't just for his lifetime, but for generations. He wasn't just going to live and barely get by and die and leave nothing to anybody. He had already set up, even though he didn't have his own child, he already had set up Eliezer so that he has somebody to impart this through. In other words, Abraham understood wealth is generational. Say that, wealth is generational. Verse 3, then Abraham said, look, you've given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. Behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. See, God's going to honor his word. The Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children. Then he brought him outside and said, look now toward heaven. Count the stars if you're able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And so he believed in the Lord, and God accounted it to Abraham for righteousness. Now, why would God, at the moment Abraham says, look, I understand wealth should be generational. I don't have anyone from my own loins. And God says, I've told you I'm going to bless you and your family. But Abraham had reached a ceiling. What is that? One, age. Two, Sarah was barren. There was a lot of things against him having children. So God takes him outside and says, now look at the heaven. Go ahead and count the stars. Now I can just imagine Abraham going, <laughs> really? And then God says, your children will outnumber. Now why is God doing that? Why did God take him to go and look at the stars because God understands you will never believe beyond what your mind can conceive 
You will never believe beyond what your mind can conceive. 3 John, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you prosper in, in all these areas, in every area, and be in health. Notice, just as your soul prospers. What's the soul? That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's your mind, your thinking, the, the area of your awareness. So the spirit is who you are. That's, that's the person. So the spirit lives in the body, and then that spirit has a soul. That's your mind. That, that's what's determining how you think, how you feel, your decision-making ability, and everything that happens in your life is controlled by that soul realm. So say that, I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. My soul is my mind, my will, my emotions, my intellect. Now that soul, that mind, that intellect, controls you. 80% of what you do, you do subconsciously without thinking about it, without even thinking about it. So God has to work on programming the mind, has to work on how you're going to look at things. Now, notice if it's the Lord's desire to increase you more and more, why doesn't he just go ahead and do that? Why doesn't he just dump everything in you? There you go. Now, now you got it. There you go. It's my will for everybody. There you got it. Well, how many you know it's God's desire that none should perish? That all should come to the knowledge of the Father. That all should be born again. God so loved the world that he gave his son. Whoever believes will not perish but have everlasting life. Why does he leave that? If your salvation is saying, why does he just get it, go ahead and save everybody? Because at the end of the day, you still have a mind. You still have a will. God has given you the ability to make your own decision. That's why I put the tree in the Garden of Eden. That dangerous tree. Hello, if that tree is so dangerous... Adam, the day you eat it, you'll die. Not only did Adam die, he broke the whole system. I mean, the whole of creation was destroyed, and many of us today, we've still been struggling under that thing. That, that's one hectically dangerous tree. So why would this loving father take this amazingly dangerous tree and leave it in the garden and then say, don't eat from it? See, family, here's the thing. Obedience is never proved until you're faced with the alternative. There's power in the will decision-making. I'm submitted to you, pastor. Really? Let's wait for the day we disagree. Not when everything's hallelujah, yes, amen, is the best past ever. Hey, no, you got to get. Go. What happens the day I say something that they don't agree with? Submission is not proved until there's disagreement. Amen. Obedience is not obedience until you're faced with an alternative. God had all knowledge of good and evil. He's saying, I am your source. You stay with me. You blessed. The day you go for another system, you'll find out that blessing didn't work. You're in a cursed place. But it had to be there for Adam to make that decision. And the moment he made the decision to go alternatively, the curse kicked in. Every day he chose God, he was blessed. Every day he honored God, all the provision was there. Every day he honored God, the blessing was at work. It was a constant decision-making reason. Here's the thing. I could take you today, and I could take you out of generosity and give you the biggest house, the nicest car, all the money you can imagine. And I can keep you. Now, I'm going to stop saying you because I don't want to accuse you of anything. Because I'm going to say, not me. I'm just helping you think through a thought here. I can take somebody 
into that place. And as long as I'm providing and I'm making sure and I'm investing right for them and I'm looking after them, they, will, they may do okay. But the day I walk away and leave that person to themselves, they will snap right back just as quick as you pull an elastic band and let it go. It'll go right back to its original place of comfort. In, in every one of us is a place of comfort. And we can be challenged beyond that comfort zone, and we're okay for a while. We can stay out there for a while. How you know you can do something for a while? You start training, you can do it for a while. It's when all the pain kicks in and you're tired and you can't get out of bed the next morning and you, do I really need this? Do I really want to get? Now we find out how much you really want this because if there's no one encouraging you, pushing you ahead and you don't have it within you and you don't have that mindset changed yet, if you still think, well, it's not really that important, I'm okay. I spoke to someone recently who used to do CrossFit as well. And I said, aren't you involved anymore? And they said, well, I just, no, I don't, I stopped doing CrossFit. I said, why? I said, well, I don't have any more pain in my body. I don't, <laughs> oh, that's, you stop because you're done. And, and just hang on till you're 50, 60, 70 years old. And then let's see, are you with me? You have to be willing to go beyond what your mind thinks you're capable of. Because if you don't, you will find the moment that pressure is removed, whether it's through you or an external source, you will go back to your place of comfort. You'll get rid of that wealth as quick as possible without even realizing it subconsciously. You'll always snap back. Where to? Where to? Where you are today. So if I asked you now, how many of you want to increase? Now, I did ask you last year. Some of you have joined in the year. Now, I have to ask this question. <laughs> if you're in the same place last year as you are today, I would say your elastic band has gone, you've done this through the year, but you've never gone, you never renewed your mind to get a bigger elastic band. Now, I use the word you because we're all in the, I put me in there as well. If I want to increase this year, I'm going to have to expand the way I thought last year. Because otherwise, I'm going to stay whatever level I am today. If I don't work on my increased capacity, then I will stay right here. There'll be moments I'll burst, and they'll go right back to where you were. And then you'll have another moment of blessing, and you'll go back to where you were. The only way I'm going to get out here is say, Lord, you said increase more. And then someone will moan, yeah, but he's got too much, and now did you see where he lives, and yeah, did you hear the car, and then you didn't, yeah, no, not too much. Lord, you said, you said you would bless me. Don't worry about those who are too afraid to move ahead. Amen. 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 Because you'll always go back to what your inner man believes. You can sit here and say, hey amen, I'm a millionaire, hallelujah. Do you see yourself as a millionaire? Do you not only see yourself, do you believe it? Do you actually believe it? Because if you really believed it, millionaires do things differently to other people. Amen. Why? That's what made them a millionaire. And listen, here's the thing. Don't let anyone ever tell you. The only person that can stop you from doing anything is you. The moment someone, someone, someone asked me, do you believe all Christians can be millionaires? See, the moment you ask that question means you don't think so. What's wrong with that? Well, not everyone can be a millionaire. I understand because not everyone knows how to renew their mind. But if you take one individual 
and that person chooses to renew their mind, then they, no one can stop it. It's not like you do everything you know to do with the Word of God, everything you know to do to invest, everything you know to do, and still not be a millionaire. That's impossible. You do it right, you get the result. Amen? Hallelujah. You get something this morning? Come on, let's give Jesus praise for His Word. This message was actually taught around the increased anointing evening that my dad did. And our next one is actually coming up. The date is on the screen right there. You can see it. What I want you to do is do anything you can to get to this evening. I've seen in my own life every single increased anointing year after year. I have increased in a huge amount from that evening. There is an anointing on that evening. And what you can do is get to that night and you will guarantee be increased from that evening. When we honor Him and honor His presence and honor His life, and you trust God, expect Him to lead you, you will always prosper and you will be blessed. You will experience the fullness of God. Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us for this powerful evening of celebrating the increased anointing. I received an email from the client's finance department, a notice of payments. I went for an interview and was told that I was considered perfect for this job. Somebody deposited money into my account with the reference, as per the Lord. They would provide all the training that I need and company branded clothes. And to top it all off, a much higher salary than anything my husband and I had anticipated. More than 40,000 rand of medical bills written off and that I should not have to worry about any future bills. We come together expecting the presence of God to manifest as an anointing for increases. Join us for this powerful evening of celebrating the increased anointing. God is ready to increase you. He's ready to multiply you. Don't miss out on this opportunity to experience His increased anointing. He is the God of provision. He's the God of supply. And I'm ready to stretch and to step into the abundant flow of the Kingdom of God. Join us for this powerful evening of celebrating the increased anointing. You can also participate through your seat by joining us online. God says, I give my word so that you can call on it. I give you a promise so that you can believe for it. For any info, please contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries. Well, praise God family, I believe you enjoyed this message thoroughly. Now, maybe you're here today and you don't have a covenant with God yet. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Him. It is God's desire to have a covenant relationship with you. So today, I really want to encourage you, make covenant with God today. Be born again today. Make a relationship start with God today. I want to lead you in a prayer that will start this relationship, that will start this covenant relationship with you and God today. So maybe you've drifted far away from God. Today, come back to the heart of the Father. Come back to that covenant relationship. So what I want you to do, if that's you, pray this prayer out loud with me that I'm going to lead you in. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. From today, I choose you. I choose to serve you. I choose this relationship, this covenant relationship with you. I believe in you. I love you and today I will serve you until I see you face to face in heaven again. In Jesus name, Amen. Well, praise God family, congratulations to those that gave their life to the Lord. If that was you, us here at Allenbag Ministries would like to give to you some free resources to help you build your faith and help you in your walk with God today. So go to our website and get these free resources and start your walk with God. Well, if you are in covenant with God and part of that covenant is increase. It is God's design for you to increase if you are in covenant with God. So if you are interested in learning more about covenant and increase, why don't you go to our website? You can get these messages for yourself so you can listen to them on your own time, meditate through them so that increase can become a natural part of your life. Well, praise God, I hope you enjoyed your time on Wisdom for Life today. 
I'm Joshua Bag and Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bag. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Allen Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Allen Bag Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. At allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. As a partner of Allenbag Ministries, you will have early access to special meetings and seminars with Allen Bag, as well as discounted prices on study material taught here at Allen Bag Ministries. Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag. You can also catch up on any Wisdom for Life programming, or if you prefer, watch our latest Wisdom for Life programs with Alan Bag on our website. All services at the Bay Christian Family Church are also streamed on our Alan Bag Ministries website, so you too can be part of our E family that also participate over weekends and on special occasions. At allenbagministries.org, you can get hold of some great study material and resources, as well as some faith-building products that are occasionally on promotion. Whether you're looking for information about Allen Bag Ministries, or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbagministries.org so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org, equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.